This week on Jerusalem Dateline, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu hosts an historic meeting with the UAE, while Bahrain signs more agreements to expand the Abraham Accords. Plus, Israel's Minister of Regional Cooperation tells CBN News to expect another country to normalize relations with Israel soon. And Israel stuck in the middle of the Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict, while the Jerusalem prayer breakfast brings the world together to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hosted a trilateral meeting with U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and the Financial Affairs Minister of the UAE. It's just the latest step in the developing ties between Israel and the Gulf states, marked by historic flights between Israel, the UAE, and Bahrain. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hosted the meeting just after the first commercial flight ever from the UAE landed at Israel's Ben-Gurion airport. Today, we are making history. We are making history in a way that will stand for generations. This is the first ever official visit from the United Arab Emirates to Israel. This is the first time since the signing of the historic agreement in the White House that the government of Israel and the UAE will be signing concrete, practical agreements of cooperation. We are committed to support legal framework for the movement of people and goods and for fostering a continuous business-friendly environment between the UAE and the State of Israel. On Monday, U.S. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin attended signings of Memoranda of Understanding in Abu Dhabi between the UAE and Israeli companies. On Sunday, Mnuchin joined Israeli officials on the first El Al flight ever to land in Bahrain. Bahrain joined the UAE at the last minute in signing the Abraham Accords in Washington in September. Today, we built on that historic occasion at the White House last month, taking the next steps to implement the declaration in support of peace and the Abraham Accords. The opportunities here are quite enormous both economic, trade, investment, cultural, and security between the three countries. Israel and Bahrain signed a joint communique on establishing peaceful and diplomatic relations on Sunday. U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman said they were in the land of Abraham where his sons Isaac and Ishmael had reconciled 3,500 years ago. Today, we're bringing the Bible back to life the children of Isaac and the children of Ishmael are reconciling once again in this holy land and in Bahrain and in the United Arab Emirates as well. It's another historic day among many historic days that the Trump administration has brought to this region. When the Abraham Accords were signed in Washington, it shelved months of anticipation over Israel's expected move to extend sovereignty or annex parts of Biblical Judea and Samaria, the West Bank. For that reason, many were suspicious of the Accords. But at a recent conference called the Abraham Accords towards a new Middle East, U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman explained that stopping the sovereignty process is only temporary. The United States believes uh, in the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria being, uh, being there permanently. We believe that in the long run, it is uh, in Israel's interest and American interests for Israel to extend its sovereignty over these communities. We also believe that it is Israel's highest and most important priority, as is ours, to extend the circle of peace for as far and as long as it will go and to really make that our first priority. Um, it, is, it is not uh, to the exclusion, to the ultimate exclusion of sovereignty, but it is, um, it is a priority. So if your follow-up question is, when will sovereignty occur? I wish I had an answer for you. We're gonna spend all, the, at least from the perspective of the United States, we'd like to spend all of our efforts uh, in the near future on diplomatic efforts, uh, push the uh, diplomatic agenda as far as it will take us, make Israel as safe, secure, and prosperous among all the, uh, all the nations in the region, create as much peace as possible, reduce the threat level as much as possible, um, and then when we feel that we've exhausted those efforts, of course, to try to, um, 
to formalize Israel's, uh, help Israel at least, formalize uh, its boundaries in a way that includes uh, its sovereignty over the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. While historic peace agreements are being made in the Middle East, not far away, a decades-old conflict has reignited. Washington is eager to bring an end to the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan that reared its head in late September. The war involves many nations in the region, including Israel. The decades-old conflict reignited over a region called Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijan claims the area, though most living there, are Armenian. The disputed area sits here between the two countries. When the Soviet Union fell in 1991, this self-governed region of Azerbaijan voted to join Armenia. The conflict pits often friendly powerhouses against each other. Turkey supports Azerbaijan, while both Russia and Iran side with Armenia. Israel also plays a role. Over decades, it and Azerbaijan have developed close ties. For Israel, it's part geopolitics and part economic. Azerbaijan is a very important country for Israel because uh, it supplies uh, much of Israel's oil. As a country that has also a Jewish community, that they are treating very well, and it is a Muslim country. And we are very much interested in having good relations with Muslim countries. And finally, it borders uh, Iran. And of course, we are interested in looking into Iran. Ironically, the alliance with Azerbaijan also puts Israel on the same side of its adversary, Turkey. Azerbaijan's ambassador, Elan Suleimanov, confirmed its close relationship to Israel with CBN's George Thomas. Out of the 57 member states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Azerbaijan is probably the closest friend of Israel. We have a 2,600 years old Jewish community in Azerbaijan. We have Christians, we have Muslims living together in peace. Azerbaijan is a close friend of Israel. I tell you that uh, Azerbaijan and Israel do not only celebrate their relationship, we're proud of this partnership. The relationship includes Israel selling advanced military equipment to Azerbaijan. When the war broke out, Armenia's ambassador to Israel protested the arms sales to Azerbaijan and left the country. The amount of weapons that we are selling to Azerbaijan is very large. And uh, I can quote uh, President uh, Iliev of Azerbaijan, a few years uh, said the sum of Israeli sales to Azerbaijan is $5 billion, uh, which is, of course, a hefty sum for Israel, and it is a useful uh, you know, export market for the Israeli military industries. This reportedly includes sophisticated drones that can be a game changer on the battlefield. We buy on the open market, including from Israel. And we're very grateful to our friends and partners in Israel for being a great partner to us. Now, remember, precision weapons are good in terms of minimizing civilian casualties. They're targeting only and only military targets. Azerbaijan has repeatedly said, we have no intention to harm civilians. Our goal is to fight with the military, not with civilians. Azerbaijan also uses conventional arms bought on the open market from many countries. Armenia says civilian areas have been shelled, forcing many residents to spend the conflict in shelters. Inbar calls the war tragic and hopes to see it end. We have nothing against Armenia. We have no dispute with Armenia. The Armenians have dispute with Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan has a dispute with Armenia. And we would love to see those two countries be able to coexist in that region. No, we have nothing against Armenia. Armenia was, was never an enemy of Israel. But after two failed ceasefires, the fighting rages on with no end in sight. Coming up, Israel's Minister of Regional Cooperation discusses the historic changes in the Middle East because of the Abraham Accords. CBN Films presents... It's a very corrupt period in Jewish history at this time. Written in stone, 
Jesus of Nazareth. The emotion is one thing, but the scientific truth is something else. The life of Jesus changed the entire world. Jesus walked on this particular street. But what does archaeology say about where he lived his life? It's an authentic location in the life of Jesus. Join Gordon Robertson and unearth remarkable discoveries. Is it really the place where Jesus spent his last night on earth? Explore where Jesus traveled. Jesus went from one Jewish place to another Jewish place. Where he performed miracles. And he raised the little girl from the dead. And where he was tried by Pontius Pilate. Tradition is wrong. Get written in stone, Jesus of Nazareth, for a gift of any dollar amount. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash written in stone. That changes everything. A new wave of anti-Semitism is sweeping the globe and the Jewish state faces hostility at every turn. Now is the time for Christians to support Israel. In CBN's free booklet, Why Christians Stand with Israel, you'll discover why Christians support the Jewish state and why we must stand together with the Jewish people. Get your free copy today. Call now or go to cbn.com slash stand with Israel. This election night, with a country divided and America's future hanging in the balance, go to a place you can trust, CBN News. CBN News presents an election night special with live coverage starting at 7 p.m. Get live updates on each of the campaigns plus analysis on the shifting balance of power. Watch November 3rd at 7 p.m. on the CBN News channel or download the CBN News app. CBN News, because truth matters. Ofer Akunis is Israel's Minister of Regional Cooperation and serves at one of the most historic times in the region in nearly a quarter of a century. We sat down with the minister to discuss the ongoing historic developments known as the Abraham Accords. Minister Akunas, uh, great to be with you on CBN News. Appreciate it very much. Thank you for inviting me, and I'm so very glad to see you here in the Knesset, in yeah. Jerusalem. You were there yesterday at the meeting at Ben-Gurion Airport. Tell me your reaction to this uh, really historic meeting. Yeah, it was an historic day to see uh, the aircraft from the Emirates with the logo of Emirates and warm welcome of the Israeli delegation to the Emirates, to their Minister of Finance, and for the American delegation as well. Uh, but they are here all the time. The Emirates are here for the first time, and it was an historic day and a very happy day. Happy day for all of us. You've been uh, serving Israel uh, for many, many years. What does it mean to the history of Israel? I will tell you something. When I was, uh, uh, let's say, younger, in the beginning of the 90s, I remember the idea of New Middle East. Uh, then uh, our late president, then he served as a minister of foreign affairs, uh, the late Shimon Peres, he said it's a new Middle East. So it wasn't then a new Middle East. It wasn't. It was old with a lot of terror, tears and blood. And we remember the days of Oslo agreements. But what happened yesterday, yeah, it, that was a new Middle East. Because you saw the aircraft from uh, the Emirates, we are looking forward to the delegation from Bahrain. I think that something new is happening right now, these days, in the Middle East. There is the Iranian issue, and Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, and Israel, Emirates, Bahrain, and I hope that you will find in a few days another countries here around us. So this is the new Middle East, and this is a new era. Quite a time to be the Minister of Regional <laughs> Cooperation. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So we have uh, a lot of uh, economic uh, uh, regional projects that we uh, uh, want to restart them. I have, I, want, I have to tell you to restart them. And uh, we talked about them with the um, Emirates, with the Bahrainians, and of course with the Americans. I think that the Abraham Fund is a very, very important uh, uh, thing that I heard yesterday from Adam Bueller, the head of the DFC. This is very important. Now that is $3 billion to encourage uh, trade, uh, cooperation, economic cooperation within the Gulf and Israel? Especially to the states, to the countries that uh, will declare the, the normalization with Israel. 
So uh, it will be for the benefit of them, but Israel will be part of the project. And we have a lot of examples. I can give you uh, some examples, like the tourism project in Qasr el Yaoud, mm -hmm. nearby Jericho. Baptism also. Yeah, the baptism, of course, and the uh, Jordan Gateway uh, nearby Bet She'an. And we talked about the um, Red Dead Pipe. And there is another project, Med Red Pipe. Uh, a lot of projects, of course, including the high-tech, bi uh, biotech, fintech, agri-tech, water tech, etc., etc. So this is a, a, a great, a great days to Israel and to our neighbors. And we've seen Bahrain, we see in the UAE. Who do you expect next that might normalize relations? I, I will let the Americans announce uh, about the, the next country that will normalize their uh, relationship with Israel. Uh, it will be their, their, their announcement and our celebration. While there is celebration about the, uh, uh, the Abraham Accords, yeah. there's also opposition from Iran, and Turkey seems to oppose it as well. Uh, how would you uh, characterize the opposition within the region? I'm very Middle sorry, East? I have to tell you, I'm very sorry, because I think that there is a huge opportunity to build a new regional situation here. And of course, I, I cannot talk about Iran, uh, because we know what happened there in the late 70s, and uh, it's still the same situation and even worse situation. But I'm very sorry for Turkey, because they can be part of a new Middle East and a new world, and the junction from the Far East and from India to North America and to Latin America as well, and to South America, actually to, to the whole world. And uh, I, uh, I'm sorry for the bad winds that came from Ankara, I'm very sorry. For evangelical Christians, how would they uh, give uh, your perspective? What should they be knowing about the Abraham Accords in this new Middle East? Of course, we are looking forward to millions of tourists from the Christian world to come to Jerusalem to see from close the beauty of this land, of this country. And of course, if there will be a peace in our region, it will be easier and there is a peace uh, to come here and to travel uh, very safely. This can be, as I said, a junction for peace. This is the place, Israel, and of course from here, from Jerusalem. Appreciate your time, uh, Minister. Up next, CBN's Gordon Robertson talks about the importance of the Bible, the media, and the Jewish state. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Enjoy! From Superbook. Your mother fell. What? Your dad went with her in the ambulance. You may have trials in life, but God will help you through them. Why doesn't God, I don't know, fix this? Superbook! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook Paul Keeps the Faith, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Our worst situations can be turned for the greatest good when we endure them. Superbook Paul Keeps the Faith. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us region. On October 18th, Israel's government press office sponsored its fourth annual Christian Media Summit. The summit brings together Christian journalists from all over the world. And this year, like most other events, it was virtual because of COVID-19. CBN's Gordon Robertson addressed the summit of how Israel is becoming a light to the nations, just as the prophet Isaiah said it would. 
We're seeing peace break out with the UAE and with Bahrain. Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if peace spread throughout the Middle East? Here is something that was on my heart. I want to share a scripture with you. It's from Isaiah 49, and this is a prophecy of, of Israel, the modern day Israel. It was insufficient that you be a servant for me, only to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the ruins of Israel. I will make you a light for the nations so that my salvation may extend to the ends of the earth. This was a scripture that inspired David Ben-Gurion. And in his writings, he talked about Israel's purpose as he was forming the modern state, as he was working in the 1920s, 1930s, working so diligently to create Israel. This was on his heart. And we today need to recognize the purpose of Israel is not just to gather the tribes, not just to restore the ruins, not just to make the desert bloom, but it's time for Israel to be a light to the nations. When you look at the emblem of Israel, you see the menorah right there. That was to recognize that on the very emblem of the state of Israel, there is a light to the nations. I like to remind people the menorah is now outside the temple, and that menorah is Israel, as Israel becomes and is a light to the nation, repairing the world, bringing good things to people. So as Christian communicators, as people in Christian media, our job is to tell the world about what Israel is doing now, I know in these times of boycott, divestment, sanctions, uh, it's a difficult task. Uh, I, like many of you, have been incredibly dismayed at the rise of anti-Semitism we're seeing throughout the world. Here in America, in France today, uh, throughout Europe, uh, in the Middle East, the rise of anti-Semitism can, can literally discourage you. You're wondering... Uh, why, where is the source of this, and why does it continue even in the, the, the year 2020? Why do we still have these things? And then on top of it, you had a global pandemic. Uh, it can lead to discouragement. Here's something else from Isaiah, and let me remind you that the Isaiah scroll was rediscovered, if you will, uh, in a cave in Qumran. Uh, as part of the birthing of the nation of Israel. It's the only complete scroll of the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, and it's a prophecy of Israel. But in that prophecy, here's a word of encouragement, and this tells you what God is doing. He will not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has established justice in the earth. And let that be our call and our mission, that we are not going to fail. We're not going to be discouraged. Greater is he who is with us than he who is in the world. We will work together with God Almighty to establish justice in the earth. Let that be our mission. Let that be our call. Be a light to the nations. God bless you. Up next, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast and how Jerusalem affected this Christian leader when she came here for the first time. Thank you for watching Jerusalem Dayline. We're committed to providing you with unbiased reporting from the Holy Land. Through weekly broadcasts, podcasts, and online media, our vision is to reach millions around the globe with the true story of what's happening in Israel and the Middle East, all from a biblical and prophetic perspective. This is a big vision and is only made possible by the generous support of people like you. Call us toll free at 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Jerusalem Dateline and make a donation that will help spread the light of truth about Israel throughout the world. It was not my grace, but God, that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. Now available from CBN Films, I am Patrick. Get your DVD for a gift of $15 or more.
What brings you back, Roman? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. From slave to missionary. Who among you heeds the call? Why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? From sinner to saint. Patrick's story began a chain of events that is quite remarkable in the impact that it had. I am Patrick. Those are the words that begin the history of Ireland. I am Patrick. Get your DVD of this inspiring documentary today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Terry Copeland Pearson joined the fourth annual Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast this year, hosted at the Friends of Zion Museum in Jerusalem. She told the virtual event how important Jerusalem is to God and how he ordained the Jews to be the keepers of the city. I had this sudden real awareness that the Lord had shown me something of himself and that he was was very delighted that I had come to his house because he always comes to mine, but I had come to his. And I saw something and experienced something. So as I pray over you and I pray over Jerusalem and I pray over the city, I want to pray over that revelation of him and all that he says that he is and that he wants to be to the Jews to the Christians, to the whole world, that he wants the world to know him as he is and not as the ungodly want to define him, but to show himself as Israel's faithful shield and buckler and to show himself as the reliable, faithful one to his word and to know that the Jews are the keepers of the city not just the politicians on, on it, over it, but they are the keepers, the God-ordained keepers of his city. And they should never let it be divided. While all can be welcome to come, they are the ones chosen to see to it that he is magnified, glorified, honored, and so he can be revealed. To the world. As Terry Copeland Pearson says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray also for the ongoing Abraham Accords and also for the tragic conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.